welcome. So welcome this morning to all of you guys. And I will hand this over to Chris. The Lord be with you all. Thank you. So we have some announcements today, beginning with our special guest. And it is a great joy for me to uh, introduce uh, Archbishop Linda, who's the, the primate of the Anglican Church of Canada, which means Linda is the senior most bishop in uh, the Church of Canada, Anglican world here. <clears throat> and uh, Linda and I actually go back uh, uh, some some years together. We studied at theology at the same college in Toronto, Wycliffe College, 35-ish years ago, although Linda was a couple years ahead of me. Uh, and uh, so it was a great joy. And Linda and I also share uh, some uh, history in that we both lived in India. And uh, Linda taught music uh, at Woodstock School for was it about five years or so, <clears throat> um, and which for those of you who remember Nigel and Se uh, Selena when they were at St. Peter's, Nigel was a student uh, at the same school that uh, Linda taught, not the same time, but so anyways, uh, so Linda, huge welcome to you this morning. Could you tell us a bit more about yourself and your role as, as primate? Well, thank you for the invitation. As I said earlier, <clears throat> um, this lockdown time is both uh, a gift and a, and a curse at the same time. It's a gift because I can be with congregations across the country quite easily online. <clears throat> the curse is not being able to be with people in person and to visit your place of worship and to be with you in your community. Um, my role as primate, yeah, I, I had about five or six months of, of kind of doing the primate thing of traveling across the country and around the world. Um, and then with lockdown have had to learn how to do that in new ways. Uh, but the primate's role is to kind of connect the country, uh, the Anglicans across the country, <clears throat> to be that person who can hear the stories from Newfoundland to Victoria, from Baffin Island to uh, Pelee Island, and to try and tell people about the life of Anglicans across the country and help us to understand how we can live together for the sake of the gospel. <clears throat> and so a lot of my work is in connecting people, and some of it is in working with the General Synod on the things that have been asked of the church as a whole church. What are the things we do together, both ecumenically, in social justice, and in our connections with the wider church in the Anglican Communion? So I meet with the primates across the world occasionally. Um, in fact, I think this date last year, I was in Jordan with the primates at the Anglican Communion, and uh, it feels like another century, <laughs> uh, but it's that opportunity to talk together, to pray together, to understand the life of the whole Anglican Communion and work together towards it. So those are just a few of the things, and I look forward to the Q&A after the coffee hour time after the service, and I'm happy to answer any questions or comment on anything you'd like to hear from the primate directly. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, Bishop. Uh, I look forward to your words later. So we have a few more announcements. <clears throat> uh, one I think is just uh, uh, important for us to remember that while we are all meeting here, Di and the teachers and the kids are also meeting at the same time, they're Zooming together. That photo there is obviously pre-COVID, just to clarify, um, but uh, keep them in prayer. Uh, as they all meet together at the same time that we do. Um, I don't see Celine on this morning yet. So just a reminder that uh, her formation group starts tomorrow night and it's not, uh, not too late to uh, sign up for that uh, if you're interested. And then the next announcement is about coffee and chat. So since we've gone into uh, lockdown, what's the word? Curfew. Um, <clears throat> we're all home by eight o'clock. So Thursday evenings, uh, just coffee and chat. If there's more demand, we can add it uh, another times during the week. But just a chance to connect together, stay connected uh, while we are in the um, in, in the curfew uh, time. So coffee and chat Thursdays at 8 p.m. The uh, link, of course, is in the calendar and in the pulse. 
And also, Neil is going to be starting a grief share group. And so, uh, February 4th, this time of, uh, of COVID, as uh, we've had to, those who are in a grieving process have had to uh, uh, process their grief in a different way and not always uh, um, uh, supported, well supported way. So, for those who are uh, looking for support in, gr in grieving their own grieving processes, whether recently or long term. Neil will be starting this in February, details in the Pulse. Feel free to invite uh, others to, uh, to this as well, uh, to pass on that information. And then I think fi our final announcement is uh, John. Uh, John and Amy are offering the marriage course. Again, invite others. John, are you out there somewhere? Yep. can't see all the speakers. Can you just uh, talk to us about this a bit? Sure thing. Yeah. Yeah, Amy and I will be um, offering the Alpha Marriage course uh, starting February 12th. Um, we're kind of imagining it. We've been talking a little bit uh, about how we – miss going on dates <laughs> with one another and having time just uh, to, to just talk to one another. So what we're imagining is that this will kind of be uh, almost a date night where we get to kind of dig deeper into our marriage as well. So we're going to have it on Friday evenings at eight. So the idea is to put the kids to bed and then have an evening just being able to talk. And the way that the course runs, uh, I went through the first video and it's really good. So there, there's kind of a guided video with certain sections where We'll pause the video and then the couples will just put themselves on mute and talk amongst themselves about a certain topic. So, um, so it's not like a teaching course. It's not going to be me and a Amy teaching you how to be married well or something like that. It's a time of learning and talking with one another and growing closer and uh, seeing where God will, uh, will take us in our, in our relationship. So um, we're really excited about it. Right. I think during this COVID time, uh, lots of people are aware of the stresses that have been put on relationships. So if you're aware of others who may benefit from this, uh, they are welcome to Zoom with us. I think that's our announcements this morning. And so, June, over to you. Yes, that is the end of our announcement. It is time for our opening song. So... You're muted. June, June. you've gone and muted yourself, so... Uh... Yes, I've pressed the, uh, the tones back into service to help us with this morning's opening song.
thank you so much, Hamiltones, Hamilton family. If I had known that were actions, <laughs> would have put my camera off and done the action instead of just muting myself and singing along. Um, but I'm going to ask Wilf to unmute himself, and we will continue with our service. La grâce de Jésus-Christ, notre Seigneur, l'amour de Dieu le Père et la communion de l'Esprit Saint soient toujours avec vous. Et avec ton esprit. Oh, it says people. Um, oh, that's no problem. Uh, Will for reader one. That's fine. Teach us your ways, O Lord, that we may walk in your truth. Give us undivided hearts to honor your name. We give thanks to you, O God, with all our hearts and minds. And we glorify your name forever. For you, O Lord, are merciful and gracious. You are slow to anger and abounding. Oh, sorry. You are slow to anger and abounding in love and faithfulness. We give thanks to you, O God, with our whole heart. And we glorify your name forever. Amen. The peace of the risen Lord be always with you. And also with you. Also with you. Peace to you all. Peace this morning. Peace. 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 And we'll continue right now with our scripture reading. Uh, so yes, um, Jorge will be reading for us from the book of Jeremiah. And lectura du libro de Jeremiah. Voici le contenu de la lettre que Jeremiah le prophète envoie de Jérusalem au reste des anciens en captivité au sacrificateur, au prophète et à tous les peuples que Nauconosor avait emmené captif de Jérusalem à Babylone après que le roi Jéconia, la reine les eunuques, les chefs de Juda et de Jérusalem, les charpentières et les serrugières furent sortis de Jérusalem. Prenez les femmes. Oh. Il, je pense qu'on a sauté un paragraphe. Oh, Il a remis à Elias fils de Echavan et à Gemaria, fils de Ilkiya, envoyé à Babylone pour se décider, roi de Juda, après de Nabucodonosor, roi de Babylone. Il était ainsi conçu, ainsi par l'Éternel des armées, le Dieu d'Israël, à tous les captifs que j'ai amenés de Jérusalem à Babylone. Bâtissez des maisons et habitez-les, plantez-les des jardins et mangez des fruits. Prenez les femmes, engendrez des fils et des filles, prenez les, des femmes pour vos fils et donnez des maris à vos filles afin qu'elles, enfantes des fils et des filles, multipliez là où vous êtes. Et ne diminuez pas, recherchez le bien de la ville où je vous euh, amené en captivité et priez l'Éternel en sa faveur parce que votre bonheur dépend du sien. Écoutez la parole du Seigneur. Nous rendons grâce à Dieu. And now I have readers three and four that Shanti and Keith, please. <coughs> <clears throat> oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O oh Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day, for darkness is as light to you. For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. 
I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works, that I know very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my unformed substance. In your book were written all the days that were formed for me, when none of them as yet existed. How weighty to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! Amen. Amen. And now, Cloven, join us for our gospel reading. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. <clears throat> when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to the one of the least of these, who are members of my family, you did it to me. The Gospel of Christ. Thanks be to God. Be to God. <clears throat> and so now we uh, welcome once again uh, our special guest this morning, uh, Archbishop Linda Nichols for that this morning. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, June, and thank you, Chris, for the invitation to be with St. Mark and St. Peter this morning. Well, the season of Epiphany, between the Feast of Epiphany on January the 6th and the beginning of Lent, is the season when we read and hear the stories of Epiphanies, the revelation of Jesus in the world sometimes acknowledged, often misunderstood, and occasionally profoundly celebrated. So if Epiphany is about revealing, about pulling back the curtain to be able to see something not seen before, I would say we have been in Epiphany since last March. Ever since the beginning of the COVID pandemic, we have had the curtain pulled back on our shared lives. And what we have seen has at times been shocking and sometimes heartwarming. We have discovered that we don't share the same values for community life. Some ignore the very people we have entrusted to tell us what is needed to be healthy. Some will not curtail personal freedom for the sake of others. And some even claim religious freedom over health care for all. Some claim the rules are for others and not for them. And we have been denying the truth about our long-term care homes and nursing homes. We have ignored justice for those most rely, we most rely on for food and health care allowing them to be paid poorly and often working multiple part-time jobs to survive. We allow those who are most vulnerable to bear the brunt of the pandemic. 
We have also seen examples of heroic sacrifice and commitment from healthcare workers, essential workers, and from our neighbors, family, and friends who have cheered us with funny videos, painted rocks and left them on the side of trails in our community with signs of encouragement, left cheer up bags of cookies on the doorstep, drive-by birthday greetings stations, and called on Zoom or Skype, or FaceTime, to just be. I said, even as I expect you may be saying, well, I haven't done all those things. But whether we have individually participated in the shocking or the heartwarming revelations, we are part of the community in which we all share in the good and the bad. And we need to pay attention. It can be so easy in the midst of hard times to simply want to hibernate, to hunker down at home with immediate family and not think about the bigger picture. Being a turtle sometimes sounds like a good idea. But as Christians, when we see these signs, we also know that God is there in the midst of them. We were created for community. Genesis tells us it was not good for Adam to be alone. We were created in and for community with each other in intimate relationships like marriage, but also with one another as siblings, as families, as communities. <clears throat> and the great commandments, love God with heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love neighbor as self, where the definition of neighbor is revealed in Jesus' teachings as even including the stranger and the enemy. Sometimes the Hebrew scriptures are portrayed as telling the story of the chosen people as a story of privilege and special relationship with God to exclusion of all others. But we also need to remember that they were chosen not for their own sake, but to be a light for all. Isaiah 49, 6, God says, It is too light a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to bring back the preserved of Israel. I will make you as a light of the nations that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. And in the passage we heard this morning from Jeremiah, as the Israelites bemoan their fate of exile from the promised land and yearn for a return, Jeremiah reminds them to pay attention to where they are now and to care for the welfare of the city in which they live. For in its welfare is yours. And of course, the famous passage in Matthew about the sheep and the goats reveals to the disciples that God's judgment will be based on how we treated those around us, those in need, the sick, the imprisoned, the hungry. And we hear that we actually see the face of God when we care for others. Why is this important? Because we live in a world that would rather not, thank you. Our relative prosperity has brought a high degree of individualism. It is about me and what I want, and if I don't like it, I'll just leave or discard or walk away from commitments made. We see around us an unwillingness to limit oneself for the sake of others, unwilling to wear masks unwilling to socially distance or to obey health guidelines for social gatherings. I saw a rather poignant reminder on Facebook that we hear these profound complaints of having been in fairly modest lockdowns intermittently for just nine months. And Frank lived for over two years in a complete indoor lockdown that was life or death. 
We also live in a society that has not wanted to look at how it shares power <clears throat> or does not. And that our legacy of colonialism and systemic racism. I am a white settler, the granddaughter of immigrants to Canada. And I have benefited from the assumptions of European superiority. And though I have worked hard, I know that every effort I have made has had a boost because I was born into the privileged in Canadian society. I did not choose this, but I have benefited from it. The results of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, the stripping away of the veil of denial about systemic racism, especially in 2020, the rising voices of Indigenous people reminding us of the continuing power and effects of the Indian Act and racist stereotypes, my own daily encounters with strong allies who firmly and gently point out when I have yet again spoken or acted out of a colonial assumption of power and privilege, and conversations with colleagues, bishops and clergy of color who have all experienced racism in the heart of our church. All of these are reminders that our community life is not healthy or whole. We do not yet see the reign of God in our communities or even and especially in our church life. I am particularly grateful for the voice of Archbishop Mark MacDonald who points out that systemic racism imprisons all of us not just those on one side or the perceived victims. It is stopping our whole community from receiving the gifts that every person brings. Racism diminishes us all, not just persons of color. Our differences are gifts to be explored together. And our baptismal covenant calls us to respect the dignity of every human being. 2020 is a year we may want to forget. Yet it was the year that has been an extended epiphany, a time of reve revealing what has been in our midst but avoided or deliberately unseen or missed, including the presence of the face of Christ there. The quality of our life as a community with the whole human family is essential to God's judgment on our commitment in faith. Psalm 139 reminds us that we were created in love by God, known from the womb. And it, the psalmist says, search me and know my heart, O God. And we were created to live in families and communities and in this world in harmony with all of God's people and the whole of creation. The quality of our life together, how we treat those who are sick, imprisoned, disadvantaged, different, marginalized, is the measure of how we have integrated the love of God through our love of neighbor. And we have work to do. At our national level of the Anglican Church of Canada, the Council of General Synod has formed a dismantling racism task force to help us renew our work at the national level to address, address racism. We are aware that our leadership does not reflect the diversity of our church. Our Council of General Synod is hugely and predominantly white. We join with other ecumenical partners in advocacy with our governments, provincial and federal, regarding long-term care, the quality of our care for our seniors and elderly, and a basic living wage for everyone. And we continue to actively work for Indigenous reconciliation and seek to be allies in advocacy for health care, justice, and healing but it is also the work of every diocese and parish. You will know best what is needed in Montreal 
and the community of St. Mark and St. Peter? What needs have been revealed that need your attention? How does systemic racism affect every member of your parish? Does your parish and diocese encourage the leadership of every baptized person and especially lift up the leadership of those not currently represented? What did COVID-19 reveal in your community about employment, housing, homelessness, care of the elderly? Who thrived during the pandemic and who suffered most? These will be the questions for our future. Did we look into the face of the hungry, the homeless, the imprisoned, the elderly, the underemployed, and those with no security or benefits who put their lives on the line for us and help? And will we discover the face of God by letting those on the, by letting those on the mar margins be seen and by offering our hand as brothers and sisters in Christ under God's love. That phrase from Jeremiah echoes in my heart, seek the welfare of the city you live in. And in it, you will find your own welfare. And also the words, of a song that you may be well familiar with. For it is in giving that we receive, in pardoning that we are pardoned, in dying that we are born to eternal life. Will we commit our lives to those God loves that we may see the face of God in them? May we have courage and grace to live into that call. Amen. Thank you so much for those wonderful words of truth and encouragement. And um, we are going to actually continue on with our um, song a preparation. We will have a discussion time afterwards, um, after the service during our coffee hour. And so um, look forward to Andy and Polly with Good Shepherd of My Soul. Hi there. Can you guys hear us? All right. Yes, indeed, we can. Thank you. Good Shepherd of My Soul. Come dwell within me Take all I am and mold Your likeness in me Before the cross of Christ This is my sacrifice A life laid down and ready to fall Troubled by the peace in true surrender, the prisoners that release from chains of anger. In springs of living grace, I find a resting place to rise refreshed. My strength is free. 
He'll carry me along through that sun veiling as struggles overcome and journey just begun to search Christ's steps and never to follow to search Christ's steps and never to follow Amen. I'm going to ask MG to join me. We're going to go into um, our time of communal prayer. So we turn our hearts and minds to God in prayer. Almighty God, we come before you as we are this day. We come to you to give you thanks and praise, to express our fears and sorrow, and to bring our requests before you. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of life. Teach us to value all life and to, oops, sorry, and to live our lives with hope and holiness to the blessing of you and others. Thank you, Heavenly Father for the gift of each other in our CMP community. Teach us to be agents of your reconciliation, redemption, and grace. We pray for seekers, for those seeking Christ, seeking faith, seeking truth, identity, or purpose. In this time of COVID-19, we ask for your encouragement and peace on those who are lonely, fearful, or neglected. We pray for Bishop Linda. We ask your wisdom, grace, and encouragement on her as she leads and oversees the Anglican Church of Canada. We ask for your guidance and blessing upon all who work with her at the National Church Office. We will now take a moment for prayer and silence. During this time, you may attend to God's presence and pray your thanksgivings and petitions in the quiet of your heart and mind. So right now, I, we're going, you can take yourself on mute. We'll pray the Lord's Prayer. Heavenly Father, take our prayers of thanksgiving, confession, lament, and petition into your heart, that we may entrust our deepest places and all our needs to you. And now we join in prayer, our sa in the prayer our Savior taught us. Father, Father in heaven, who art in heaven, hallowed be, be your name, name. Um, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come. Amen. 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 on earth Amen. as it is in heaven. This day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. 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 And uh, now we'll have our benediction from Bishop Linda. Oh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> May God grant you courage to confess Jesus Christ as Lord and to proclaim with joy the good news of the gospel wherever you may be. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Amen and amen. So our closing song will be from Stephen. <laughs> Feel free to sing along at home. This is a familiar song to everyone who uh, comes to CMP. And uh, I hope that this is uh, a fitful way to uh, depart today. A little louder, please. I can try. Let me try this. If I sing out, you'll probably hear it okay. Let me know. Thank you. shepherd I won't
won't be wanting I won't be wanting He makes me rest In fields of green With quiet streams Even though I walk Through the valley Of death and dying I will not fear Cause you are with me You are with me Your shepherd's staff It comforts me You are my feast In the presence of enemies Surely goodness Will follow me Will follow me In the house of God God is my shepherd I won't be wanting I won't be wanting He makes me rest In fields of green With quiet streams Even though I the valleys there's always valleys I will not fear cause you are with me you're always with me your shepherd's staff it comforts me you are my feast in the presence of enemies. Surely goodness will follow me, will follow me in the house of God forever. In the house of God forever. House of God forever. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Nous rendons Amen. grâce à Dieu. Amen. 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 Have a fantastic week. God bless you guys. Well, hang hang around yes. to chat with Bishop Linda. Don't, yes, you don't have to go anywhere. <laughs> Grab your Grab. coffee and chat together. If you, as do, well. if you do have to go, God bless you. Enjoy. Enjoy the beautiful, wonderful day outside. And um, but yes, if you can stick around, please do. Grab a coffee. <laughs> That's right.